This is the first look at the Tangerine SDR device uh, being currently under production by uh, the Tucson Amateur Packet Radio Group uh, known as Tapper who hosts the Digital Communications Conference every year and that's where we are right now. We're at the uh, 2019 Tapper DCC in Detroit, Michigan at the Marriott Hotel and um, I asked Scotty to give me a short demonstration. This is just a mock-up. This is not an actual device yet and they're hoping to have a working device like pre-production or maybe during production device come next February for the Orlando Hamcation of 2020. So I wanted him to explain to me the mock-up on this device and so that we could get the actual first look on YouTube for the Tangerine SDR. Okay, so right here we have the pieces of the Tangerine SDR, which is a modular software-defined radio. And this is just a mechanical mock-up, so these are made out of like PC board, uh, cut to p the proper shape so that they can plug together to give us an idea of whether our uh, complex idea will actually work. And so we start out with the data engine. So what's the point of the, of the, what's the, what's the goal of the project? The goal of the project is to make a modular scientific uh, I guess we call it an SSDR, Scientific Software Defined Radio, with multiple use cases, one being the HAMSI Personal Space Weather Station, right. another one may be a uh, Phase 4 ground uh, uh, receiver, satellite mm -hmm. receiver, mm -hmm. another one will be for academic use, mm -hmm. uh, another will be for an RF sniffer, okay. if, we, uh, if you want to search for Powerline RFI, uh, and also just a general purpose HAM receiver for experimenters. They want to experiment in SDR and get their feet wet in the innards of the of SDRs. And the idea is we want to make it such that we can sell a low-cost version for educational institutions and a high-performance version for the Space Weather Station where they need the performance. And we can reuse some of the hardware that doesn't change. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I got your, uh, your forum presentation you did on Friday. And which goes into greater depth, but I wanted to get a close-up of the actual mock-up here, so go ahead. Okay, so this is basically the data engine board we have here, and the data engine is kind of the heart of the whole system. It has all of the high-speed I.O., which consists of USB 3, USB 2, and a dual gigabit Ethernet port. This additional I.O., this is a low-speed I.O., but this is a, called a PMOD port, and we're going to use this for a magnetometer or for really whatever else you need, but in the first case, for the Space Weather Station, it's going to be for a magnetometer interface that we'll plug in here. Then in addition, we have expansion interfaces. The lower one here is for a clock module, and I'll show you how these plug together in a second. These two connectors are for an expansion module, uh, I.O. expansion module called a LEAF, and then we turn the board over, we have two connectors here for RF modules. And these are the heart of the system, well, the, the front end of the system, if you will, because this is where the antennas are going to connect. The RF will come in, be digitized, and fed over here to an FPGA that's in the corner of the data engine. This data, FPGA will process the data and send it out either USB 3 at 5 gigahertz, 5 gigabits per second, or gigabit ethernet either way and it likely to be gigabit ethernet to start with because this is pretty much the standard by which the space weather station is based but we added USB 3 because it's a high-speed interface it doesn't cost much money and it will add versatility to the board so I'll show you how they plug together I guess we can start with the RF modules they're basically going to be identical modules and there's going to be two of them so in the space weather station case we'll have a single dual channel RF module. So you have two antennas and two ADCs and then the digital output comes out on this 140 pin connector which plugs on to the data engine like this. Plugs in and then it resides in parallel with the data engine. And again we have space for two of them. So we plug the second one on. Now we have pretty much a, a stack I can get it on here. We have pretty much a stack of boards, even though this is comprised of two modules and with two hold down screws, we have a stack of two boards. Then when we want to continue on, we need, uh, if, if we don't need a fancy clock like a GPS disciplined oscillator or a very high performance low jitter oscillator, which some software defined radios need, then 
basically we're done. That's the radio. And it's, we're done really with one RF module. But if you need a high performance clock, like we're going to need for Personal Space Weather Station, which includes a high, a highly accurate timestamp and a very low jitter clock, we add what's called a clock module, which plugs into this, this is an M2 connector, the same connector they use on solid state drives. So it's very inexpensive and it's also very high speed. So we can plug a clock module in here and we have the hold down screw for the clock module. I can get this in here without too much trouble. Oops. Okay, and then the clock module will have a GPS antenna for the GPS for a GPS DO and a reference input in case you happen to have a high dollar rubidium standard that's more accurate than the clock module you can feed it in also what you can do is you can feed a common clock into multiple data engine RF module assemblies and you can synchronize them all together so then I can have two boards here which is four channels these are clock synchronous I can have two boards and then I can have eight channels clock synchronous because I synchronize them with this external input here so that's another feature of the clock module it allows you to synchronize multiple boards into one system. And then for low speed I.O. we have, I should have had this over here, this is a Raspberry Pi hat. So we will accept a standard Raspberry Pi hat in this connector here. Or if you want to use, if you, this, but this connector only provides low speed I.O. Seri typically serial ports like I2C, SPI, or UART ports. And so if you need to do something a little higher speed, but maybe not as high speed as these connectors, then you can use a custom board, we call it a leaf. It mounts into the high speed connector down here and then, and then sandwiches onto the top of the data engine with a low profile pin connector. So now I have a third stack of board that is a low speed IO board. And now what we can do on here is we can put an Arduino connector we can put a, uh, an Ultra 96 board connector, which has some high-speed I.O., which is the purpose of this. We could put a uh, Beagle board, uh, what do they call it, a cape? But we could basically build boards, many flavors of these boards that have different I.O. expansion capability. So you can use off-the-shelf standard boards that are available today in place of the Pi hat. And. Uh, the only thing that we're really missing on here, I, I, you know, might notice I don't have a power connector. Well, we're, we're going to turn this, this uh, USB connector vertical and put a power connector in here. And then someone also mentioned we don't have any way to mount it. So we're probably going to extend the board out enough to put some mounting holes in the corner. And this is roughly the size of like an Odroid N2, which is uh, a 90 by 60 millimeters. This is 100 by 100 millimeters. So we'll make something comparable to the computer that we can build into a stack. So we'll probably put the computer underneath it. And then you have a modular cube-like thing. Rather than having it expand out horizontally or vertically, we want to stack it. And so I guess, I guess that's about it as, as far as the use of the word. Okay, where can people go for latest updates on the project? Uh, we have a website called tangerinesdr.com. And everything that we, we ever wanted to know should be on that website, including how to sign up for the TeamSpeak session. That sounds great. I appreciate it, Scotty. All right. That's excellent. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh -huh, thank you. Okay. All right, that's great.